What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 5 of our Tic-Tac-Toe AI series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 4, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here, please watch those videos and then come right back. Now if you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 4, in which case your program should resemble mine and it works kind of neatly but still, you know, I mean it works, but it's still pretty stupid especially when we try to win and we will be fixing all of that right away. So head over to your initializer sprite and right now what we're going to do is to initialize our winning sequences list. So head over to variables and grab this um, block which says add thing to uh, and uh, you also want to grab this block of code which says delete all of possible moves. You want to change that possible moves to be winning sequences and put that right at the top. Now within this add thing to um, possible moves you want to change that to be winning sequences and here's what you want to add. So you want to add all the possible ways in which the player or the computer can win. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on including the diagonals and the um, columns. So I'll be doing that and I'll be right back. So finished actually initializing the entire winning sequences list and this is what it should look like if you've done it correctly. So you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then you should have 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9 and then you should have the diagonals as well, which is 159 and 357. So that would be your entire list and you should have a total of eight elements. Now, if you wanna test that, just click on the checkbox, which would show the list. And then when you actually click the green flag, you should see that it has eight elements and it's working pretty fine. So I'm gonna hide that and move on to the AI. So click on your computer sprite and what you wanna do now is to define a new function from my blocks. So click on make a block and I'm going to call this function check winning and it's going to check if the player or the computer can win in the next move. And uh, I'm going to add in an input which says side uh, and it, you should have this input which says add input number or text and I'm going to add another input which says spacebar and um, you should have that as well um, being a number or a text. So I'm going to click OK now and if you did it correctly this is what it should look like. I'm going to zoom uh, out so that we have some more space while coding and this function is a bit complicated folks so if you do not understand it completely just hold on and I'll explain everything to you to the best of my abilities. I'm going to click on make a variable now and I'm going to call it i and set it for this sprite only and this is basically a counter similar to how um, we use the variable c in our um, what was that our, our initializer. So click on ok and initially what you want to do is to set i to be 1. Now you want to head over to, uh, to your control section and grab a repeat 10 and you want to change that repeat 10 to be uh, instead of 10 um, the length of winning sequences list. You can make it 8 but I think it's just better to have you know length of um, possible moves um, or winning sequences in our case but it's up to you really. So you want to have a repeat length of winning sequences and now within that you want to grab an if else. Now within that if else you want to have three ands and in order to do that grab one and and nest another one inside it and you should have this um, and you should have your um, if uh, else looking something like this. Now within your first uh, and here's what you need to do. You want to grab an equals to, put that right there and within the right side of the equals to you want to put that side variable inside it. Now here's where things get a little bit complicated and bear with me right now. I'm going to delete, uh, not delete, uh, uncheck that show of the variable and now let's get into our main code. Now you want to have if item um, uh, item one of possible moves and within that you want to have a letter um, one of apple and instead of apple you want to change that to be um, once again item one of possible moves and change a little more of the stuff. So you want to change that last possible moves to be square list. You want to change this possible moves to be winning sequences. Uh, you want to keep that letter one as it is and then you want to change this uh, item 1 to be item i. There we are. Perfect. Now if you do not understand this completely, it's okay. I'm going to explain it to you right now. So uh, we have our winning sequences list right here and uh, our variable i is, uh, or our counter is what is going to loop through and check uh, uh, each of these items of this list. So we are going to first check if item, I'm going to zoom out so that you guys can see better. 
So if item um, letter one of item i of winning sequences, okay, is equals to side. So letter one of item i, in this case item one, so letter one is going to correspond to this one right here at the beginning. So if one is equals to side and side is going to be either X or O, the player or computer, you know, what they put in and uh, it's going to check if that is O and then it's going to um, check if that item uh, of the square list, okay? So square list is what is going to contain these respective square numbers. And if that in, in that is equals to side, if that in that, that was just weird. It means if the item um, of one in the square list, uh, item one of square list is one, uh, I'm sorry, is X or O or the particular side in our case. And then item two of this or letter two of this is also going to be the particular side. Then it's obvious that the side can make the uh, move to be level three or uh, to letter three, as long as the letter three is vacant and that's where we use our space. And then in uh, which case we'd actually have a win. I do hope uh, that made sense. That was as best I could explain this. Now we can duplicate this entire thing once again and put that right at the end. There isn't enough space. So I'm gonna have to scroll um, out and put that right there. You wanna change this to letter three and you wanna duplicate this once more time, put that inside and change the middle one to be letter two. Perfect. Now you also want to change this third one to not be side, but instead be space. So I'm going to move that and put the space right there. Oopsie. I want to put the space right there. You can get rid of that side and move and scroll and put that space inside that. There we are. Perfect. Now keep in mind here, we are only checking if the third element is a space. And we'd also want to check if the first two um, are, could be spaces, you know. So in case letter three and letter two were X's, for example, then letter one may be a space. So we'd have to check that as well. So to do that, just duplicate this and duplicate this once more. But instead of an if else, what you just want to do is to actually I put that inside the if you want to put that inside the else statement. And if you put that inside the if you'll get some really weird bugs and you want to duplicate this entire thing and put that inside the final if. There we are. And before I uh, change all of this, what I want to do is to increment i before I forget it. So I'm going to change i by one right uh, before, you know, repeat length of winning squares. Perfect. Now let's change each of this. So I'm going to um, at the end uh, put the space at a uh, letter two, and then I am going to put um, uh, space at letter one right after this. I'm going to move this right here. Uh, move the side right here and put in the space. So perfect. Now we have that entire thing set up. So let's go um, step by step here. So in this case, our move would be um, have uh, our move would have to be uh, where's that? Our move where's move? Yeah, here there we go. So our move in this case is going to be that particular letter of winning sequences. And uh, keep in mind, we also have to set play to false right after we make our move. So set played to be um, not false, true. There we are. Now you want to duplicate this and uh, based on where you put that, you know, uh, space bar. So in this case, it was letter, um, where's that? Oh yeah, this was actually letter three since letter three was our space bar. So don't mess up right there. Whatever was the space should be your move. So this would be letter three, this would be letter two, and this um, would be letter one. And there we are. Perfect. Now let's actually call in our function within this com to play. So now keep in mind, this would have to be uh, happening before we have our check center block uh, activating. So what you want to do is to again, do something very similar to what you did with the other sprites. Have this if played is equals to false here. You want to change this check center though, to be instead um, check winning. And you want to say check winning O first. And then within the second parameter, you want to just uh, press the space one. So there's a space bar inside this. And then you want to check again if played is equals to false. Now you want to check if X can win, in which case your move would be X. So there we are. Now let's actually test our program. So now when we hit that, now we can see it play the center. And now it actually is trying to win. So when we stop that, now it stops the player from winning and it's also threatening to win again. And as you can see, this is a pretty smart AI already and it sort of works but there's still you know a lot of enhancements that can be made for example if we just let the ai win and then we make another move it plays as well and all that would have to be fixed 
And keep in mind this AI can still be beaten, it's not yet invincible, and we will be making it invincible in the next few tutorials. And that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.